think I'll wait for the call in later. Okay, let's take a look and see if we're live here. Yep, here we are, pa uh, Pat. <laughs> here we are, Perrin. What, I was just talking to Pat not too long ago. We are live on the Metal Voice. What is going on, North America? The countdown. The countdown begins. Perrin, what's happening, man? What's happening? Happy almost New Year to you and to everyone out there, except for those of you who have already had New Year's, in which case, happy January 1st, because we are global. <laughs> yes. So I'm sure a lot of our friends over in Europe and a couple other places have already had their New Year. Hopefully they're uh, in the early hours of the morning watching us. Uh, and, and Jimmy, you'll have to tell me, is this our first ever New Year's special on the Metal Voice or... Have we done this before my time? Is this our first no, time I think going this is the live? first one. This is definitely this the, is the first one. The first annual The Metal Voice New Year's Countdown. So we got us some cool things for you guys today. We got a draw for the fantastic Metal Voice t-shirt. And coming on soon, we should have members of Flotsam and Jetsam, Aldo Nova, uh, Rick Hughes of Sword, and Carmine Apice world famous drummer of so many bands so uh you know we, we brought out the a-list for the new year's special I'm gonna talk to them about what they have going on in 2021 uh some reminiscing about 2020 and hopefully set you guys up for a way better 2021 than we had in 2020 hopefully some live music some good new releases and uh, a world slowly but surely getting itself back to normal and we might even talk about that little thing that Kiss had going on today in Dubai. You know, uh, let me sure. show everybody this, okay? This is the magic of the metal voice right here. Um, first of all, I want to say hi to Mike Plata. Happy New Year. Terry saying almost 3 p.m. here in Sydney. So they've already gone through the whole New Year thing. They're right? well into the New Year's. They're like way well into the New Year's. Tell us how 2021 looks. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. Um, let me show everybody this here. Hold on. Sorry, guys. I'm doing some technical stuff here. And just making sure everything's up and running on the page. I can see all the comments. I call shotgun on a shirt. <laughs> That's rich. Okay. So here we go, guys. So throughout this whole week, we've been... Show the shirt. Show the shirt. The beauty of the shirt, it does not... Uh, <laughs> Zoom does not give justice to the beauty of the shirt. And the body does not come up the shirt. You've got to put your own body in the shirt. That's right. So here are the names that I've collected. And here is the famous expo hat where I put the names in. I shake and bake it. And then I will pull out a name on the live draw. So those of you who have put your name in the draw, that means that you subscribe to the Metal Voice email list. So that's the catch. There's always a catch there, Baron. I'm not just going to give it away. There's a catch. We will not sell your email to uh, Sears or whoever. Um, but we, we do need not... to be able to stalk you. Yeah. What's that? We do need to be able to stalk them, though. Yes. Michael Gilbert is waiting in the waiting room, and he will be our first guest. Michael Gilbert, Gilbert the lead, or actually the guitarist of Flotsam and Jetsam. One of my favorite bands. One of my favorite guys. He's actually a good Great friend band. of mine. But before Legendary I put him on, guy. I want to show everybody the hat. The names, the draw. We got some. I'm going to read through some names right now and put them in the hat. And then at the end of the show, we will draw the hat and see who wins. And Jimmy, let me say. I'm a you know, showman. I'm a shows, showman, Perrin. Jimmy, some shows use an accounting firm. <laughs> we do not use an accounting firm at the Metal Voice. We use the Montreal Expo's hat for height That's and right. security. All right. Here we go. And as Michael is waiting for us, but it's not his time, he's going to come on at 11, okay? Michael has go. a shirt. Michael, Yes, Michael Gilbert does have a shirt. Andrew Daly, in the hat. There is no cheating. There's nothing nothing in my arms here, okay? Here we go. Scott and Josie, right here. And I'm showing you the names here. I, I don't fool around. We have Michael Hampton. You see that? You see that? I ain't joking around. In the hat. We have Richard Cook. There you are. There you are, Rich. We have Michael Garrett right there. 
We have Alexander, Melo, and Rico. These are people from all around the world, Perry. Global. We're global. We have Derek Wilkinson. Bada boom. Look at that. We have Calvin Messer. Look at that. Calvin Messer. Then it just doesn't stop. Chuck Fisher. To win. Show the show the shirt. Show the shirt while I'm doing this. Kim Mome. Right there. All the way. Look at that. Look, that's what you're getting. The the famous metal voice draw. Jeff Mendelhall. Right there. Right there. You think I'm fooling around, huh? Melissa Nee. Melissa. Carlo Leal. Okay, we'll stop right there. They're in the hat. There's no monkey business going on. This is, like you said, <laughs> countries in the world use these famous accounting systems. We use the Expo hat. I have uh -huh. some more names, and I will enter the names as And the start. ballots are handwritten by hand the CEO my friend. Handwritten. Sometimes my handwriting is so bad, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. All right, let's bring in Michael Gilbert. Michael Gilbert from Flotsam and Jetson. And I know, oh, he's in his kitchen. In his kitchen. He probably is thinking he's going to be on at 11, which he's supposed to be. I'm bringing him on a little early. <laughs> What's up? Look at this. Look at where I were. But he's connecting. He's connecting. You there? Jimmy, what's up, man? What's up? What's going on, <laughs> man? What's go Look what I did. Look what I did for the occasion. <laughs> Look at you this. could have worn any shirt. Look at any this. shirt you could have worn on New Year's Eve. And, and I told Michael this. Michael goes, Jimmy, I'm going to give you a shirt. And I go, you know what I want? I want something sort of sort of slick, but not over, overdone. You know, I don't like overdone because you can't wear it on special occasions. You know what I'm is, saying, Michael? Jimmy, that is an honor <laughs> because we got Aldo Nova tonight. We got Carmine Apathy tonight. We got Sword Rick Hughes tonight. But you are wearing the Flotsam and Jetsam shirt. So, Michael is already a winner. <laughs> Michael, this ending, is Perrin. Perrin is Michael. 2020 with a bang. Hey, what's going on? How's it All going, right. man? It's going. It's going good. So, uh, tell yes, me, thanks Mike. for having me on tonight. Uh, for sure. Very man. special night. It's going to be New Year's here in one hour, okay? Eastern, East Coast time. Tell me what you're doing for New Year's. Right now, uh, I'm, I'm making I'm making mac and cheese. Ah. So um, we're gonna have some mac and cheese. The neighbors got some pretty good fireworks going on right now. Uh, have a couple friends coming over a little bit later, and uh, having some cocktails. And yeah, up. watching are... uh, Seacrest right oh. now. So Mike, oh, Michael yeah. can have friends over. So I'll receive Jimmy and I are in Montreal, Quebec, <laughs> where we are in lockdown. <laughs> but we cannot oh. have friends over. We can only have our Virtual loved ones. Friends. Who who won't be our loved ones if we're locked up with them much longer. But you know, we're doing our best. So great that Michael can have company. Tell me, Michael. Yeah, I, I'll probably have to sneak him in. Ah, uh, all right. Mike, do what you gotta do. Tell tell me what's going on in the Flotsam world. All right. Where, where's this new album? 2021. What can we expect? And that's what this show's about too. What we can expect in 2021. Will this album see the light of day in 2021? New Flotsam album. Oh, absolutely! It was actually supposed to. It was supposed to come out in January. We had uh, uh, that was what the plan was. So it's it's pretty much it's done. Everything's done except for the artwork at this point because we knew we weren't going to be able to do a January release, and it got pushed back to June. So we kind of you know we stopped doing the uh, white knuckle. Uh, recording and just kind of started taking our time with with the mixes and stuff like that. It's it's completed uh, except for a couple of, of artwork things that we're gonna do and then uh, it'll be released. I think we're gonna be releasing a video here pretty soon, uh, a lyric video for the first single. Really? So uh, maybe February. Uh, look for that in February or maybe maybe March. Okay. And, cool. and, and typical question, what's the sound going to sound like? What direction are you guys going in? What, what, what have you decided as the direction musically? Well, this is, this is the absolute perfect follow-up to chaos. Um, we couldn't uh, have planned it any better. We just, we all basically put on our, uh, uh, our, our work, our work boots or whatever. And we started writing and it ended up coming out, 
uh, it's like the end of chaos on steroids, basically. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. I think you guys are gonna love it, man. Can you hear that? Can you hear my neighbors over here? What's your neighbors doing? Uh, they're blowing stuff up, which really? I, I I like that as long as it's not blowing up like my car or anything so, like that. Sort of like reminds like, me of the Kiss show today. Everything was blowing up. <laughs> yeah, Kiss had a few fireworks in Dubai today. It looked like. Uh, hey, Michael. So how? optimistic or not optimistic are you about maybe being able to tour at least in the latter half of 2021 we had you up here in montreal at the famous fufun electric i think i guess it must have been 2019 uh what are the chances we we see you back here maybe in the back end of 2021 how are you feeling well we started looking towards uh maybe october of 2021 but i don't know you know i don't even know if that's going to be a possibility wow. you know at this point so um, you know, I, I think we're going to have to actually start looking at, uh, 2022, the beginning of 2022, and hopefully we're going to start opening stuff up. That the last thing we want to happen is to be out on the road. And then all of a sudden, you know, where we're doing, you yeah. know, six days, six shows a, a week. And then, uh, to find out that we can only do three shows when we're out there, it would just be kind of, kind of devastating, uh, for, uh, tour wise, you know, it's just, yeah. it wouldn't be a good financial Ah, so can you, you show us? Can see. you show us? The, show, show us what's going on. As long as they don't land on the roof, it's all good. I want to see what's happening. Okay, come on. All right, take Let's a little tour happening. of my backyard too. Arizona, baby. Uh, we got oh, snow and ice that. here, and we don't have snow and ice in Arizona. Look at that. Can you guys even see that? Is it too dark? Yeah. So, no, 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 it's good. See it. We see it's perfect. Yeah, look at that. Wow. So. Is he just like doing fireworks for the sake of doing fireworks or is he actually celebrating like two hours from now New Year's? Uh, I don't know. That's a good it's question. Celebrating <laughs> almost New Year's. <laughs> Any excuse I actually to have, push it out, you know? I have some fireworks here too. We're going to blow some stuff up tonight as well, but that's going to be in a couple hours. Okay. See I, got. I got I got like the, the, the cheap fireworks. Um, I didn't get the... You know, we've got like, uh, here's what we got. You get the kiss fire. We got the cool cats. The cool cats. Got to have these. Mm -hmm. um, and then, okay, don't. <laughs> yes, and I've got sparklers. So you got the pyro. <laughs> whatever, right? But, uh, yeah. And then, the, uh, the you know, the M80s and stuff. I'm not going to show you guys that right now. But maybe I'll do a... a a video of that me blowing some stuff up in a little while what do you guys want to see me blow up whatever you want <laughs> okay <laughs> maybe a sparkler or something i don't know i'm not really that you know <laughs> all right we're canadian we don't blow <laughs> stuff up. we have americans we, we do don't get too us. crazy <laughs> you know that we don't get too crazy okay so michael getting back to flotsam all right are you ready to take that vaccine and hit the road and you know i mean it's your living right are, are you going to like, are you anxious to get back? And if you do get back, is vaccine an option for you? Some people are for it. Some people are against it. And I'm, I'm okay both ways. I'm just saying, what are your thoughts? You know, I, I don't know. I'm on the fence about this because um, like normal vaccinations, it, it takes what, seven years to figure out if it's, you know, what the after effects are going to be. And mm -hmm. this happened. It only took them a few months to do this one. So I don't know. I'm a little skeptical about that. I, I kind of want to see, you know, I was reading something today where uh, a person had got the, they got the vaccine and nine days later or whatever it is, seven days after they still got COVID. So uh, does it really work? It, it, I don't know. Well, no. I, I need to. I, I, I could help you on that part. So my, 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 my cousin's an infectious disease doctor. And he says that anytime you take a vaccine, it takes two weeks before it actually, you start developing the antibodies. Like you could get a cold, you get sick right away. So don't be scared about that part. I agree with you. It needs a little more time. I'm not pro or against. I'm kind of like you, wait and see, right? But I'm not scared of it though. Yeah. Michael, what about the yeah. fact, I mean, we talked about this a few weeks ago that, you know, Live Nation was kind of saying that they might not let people into their venues unless they have proof of vaccination or if they'll take a rapid test, you know, on site or whatever it might be. And you'd think that might apply to artists as well, who they're going to allow into their venues. So just 
you know, because that's when it traipses over into your livelihood to a certain extent. If venues are going to say, not only can people not come to the show so they can't prove vaccination, but that might go for you guys getting into the venue or being able to play that particular venue as well. So what do you think about that, this, this crossover between kind of our medical choices, but being able to work, so to speak? If we're still at that point, when we go, to, when we tour again, when we set back out there on the road, then um, we, we probably don't have any business being back out there if it's still spreading. Mm -hmm. And, and that point, you yeah. know, if we have to have proof of vaccinations and stuff like that, I just, I don't, I don't think we should be out there. I don't think anybody should be in any venues and, and uh, you know, yeah. being close to each other. If, if, if that's the case. Yeah. So, cause this is the big question for 2021. Yeah, right? I, mean, I think it, all of us yeah. as music fans, have missed our shows. I mean, we look forward to all the new releases. There's so many great new releases coming in 2021. Some bands have held on to them. Some bands have kept, you know, working. But we're all dying. I think, you know, Jimmy and I, in addition to our top albums of the year, we usually do our top shows of the year. I saw one show this year in February, and that was it. And Jimmy, you probably not much more than that. So we're just dying to see you and so many people out there. You know, that's probably the biggest question mark we have for 2021 is will we get back to live music yeah. and what do we have to do to make it happen yeah oh yeah uh we're, we're chomping at the bit we we want to get out there i mean that, that's what we do you know and being on the road that's that's our home uh, it's great being home but not for like home home where i'm at now but for a year and just uh, man it gets a little it's a little stir crazy we're just not used to it you know we're uh it, it's it's in all of our blood to be out there running around and on the road, like and acting like 15 year old kids, you know? So let's wrap it all up. Uh, a video possibly in February, correct? Uh, late February or early March. That's what we're looking at right now. A lyric video, the band, the, 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 the album is in the can, right? It's ready to go. Yes. Artwork. Oh, yeah. How about the artwork? Is that done? uh it's 95 percent done okay we're just uh, gathering our credits and our thanks list and uh uh our, our sponsors and stuff like that okay so and and the sound and the musical direction is hard hitting harder than the last album yeah yeah it's it's gonna be uh brutal for a flotsam record it's gonna be it's a step above chaos for sure all right and do i have the album in front i of cannot wait album? for you guys to hear it well i'm curious and i'm anxious and i thank you so much happy new year uh i'm gonna happy let you new go year, you we got rotating guest next up is uh, carmine right parent it's carmine right next yeah super buddy go blow some stuff up michael buddy, happy new year can't wait to see you again in montreal uh we will talk soon man have yourself a great one happy new year guys thank you very much thanks man take care cheers Okay, let's go. Oh, good timing. Guess who's waiting for us? Do we do smooth transitions here or what? <laughs> you know what? Rich said any 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 flots and reissues. All right, so let me let me give everybody before I bring Carmine on. Carmine's coming on, then Alda Nova's coming on, then Rick Hughes is gonna blow it up into the new year. All right, let's bring him on. The man. There he is. Can you hear there us? There he is. The legend. The legend. Can you hear us? Carmine. We had you. Can you hear us now? Mic check. Here we go. Yo, what's going on? I'm just hanging out. Watching <laughs> TV. Like all of us. Listening to fireworks going on outside. Really? Already? Yeah, it's like uh, here in Florida, that's what they do. I guess. I mean, yeah, I we just had Michael Gilbert out in Arizona. Here. They're doing the same thing. <laughs> it's my first year here. And like I'm hearing and I'm seeing fireworks all around. Uh, not 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 the kind that go, you know, from uh, a house. From I'm, I'm I'm talking about like you know, big fireworks. Like yeah. Kiss, like Kiss fireworks. Like the, yeah, the, Kiss had some big fireworks in Dubai today. So maybe just a notch below that. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely, and I, and then you go to the store here. You see, you see, you can buy fireworks in the store. Yeah, you know, in the, in the grocery store, and I go, what are they selling fireworks for? And I said, what is she fireworks? God bless them. They must do that, and sure enough, 
I hear fireworks all night. So, so tell us, what what new projects are you doing in 2021? You're always doing something, you nonstop. Well, I got you know I got a new Cactus album coming out. I've I've been working on an instrumental album. Mm -hmm. It's a um, uh, with a guitar player from uh, from L.A. He plays bass and guitar. Okay. His name is uh, Fernando Podomo. He was really really great player. All right. Um, and then I got all my drum books are being re-released in 2021, instructional books. I have like eight drum books that are being released, and some of them haven't have not been out for a while, and we're revamping and redoing it. It's coming out on Modern Drummer Publications. Perfect. Okay. So that's all pretty cool. Vanilla Fudge? Fudge Supreme? Vanilla Fudge is, you know, we, we had a bunch of gigs that, have slowly been revamped and rescheduled. So those will be happening in uh, 2021. We don't know when yet. I'm also doing an art exhibit. I do uh, um, art with, uh, with a friend of mine, Ed Heck. I do, uh, it's, everything's made of drums. If you go on my Facebook, you can see what it looks like. But uh, we're doing an art exhibit now online and we're gonna do one in March in Sarasota at an art gallery. Okay. And uh, yeah, we're just uh, you know trying to do what you can. I got a studio here in my new house in Florida, so I'm able to go in there and and record and practice and do all that stuff. So I'm happy about that. How about you and, and your brother? Any more gigs or any albums you're gonna release with Vinny? Say again. Vinny, you and Vinny are gonna do any of the sort of the drum? Yeah, I mean we'll we'll do gigs if they start booking gigs again. Mm -hmm. You know, we we had we had just finished the run of about five gigs in February, and we were planning some more, and then the you know, the virus hit, and that was the end of that. You know? All right. How optimistic are you, Carmine, about that? We were just talking to Michael Gilbert, and he said he's thinking maybe fall. You know, he's hoping he can get his band back out on the road. So, what are you realistically thinking about if you can get back on the road? I think it's going to be fall? June. Yeah. yeah, June. I think June. Because you know that that's when they're predicting everybody's going to have the virus, uh, the vaccine. Okay. So yeah. I think that's probably realistic, and that, and they're thinking of doing a, a cactus, um, Pat Travis and Rick Derringer tour together. Hey. Awesome. We love Pat. Pat's a Canadian from Ottawa, not too far from here. Yep. Yep. Legendary. Pat's from legendary, Ottawa. legendary. He's awesome. He's a real good friend. Well, both they both of them are real good friends of mine. Wow. I know Rick longer than Pat. I know Rick since you know, the 60s, you know, when he was uh, with Johnny Winter and back in the days, like 1969, I think. You know, Carmine. I just lost, I just lost a friend who was, who was uh, I knew him the longest of anyone in the business, you know, Leslie West. Yeah, that, that's I was going to ask you about that. Yeah, like, Leslie, I, want, I, I was saying to Jimmy, I wanted to ask you because you had some really nice words to say about Leslie. Yeah, uh, Leslie is I, an amazing player. A funny guy has a really dark, crazy sense of humor. And, uh, he, you, you know, he, he's a, a great, a great player. I mean, an amazing player. Yeah. You know, I, I think amazing honestly, he was a kid and he, and he just kept going. The tone, his tone was just so remarkable that, you know, you always have to admire somebody that when you hear him, you just know who it is right away, no matter what he's playing on. And, and Leslie was one of those guys. And yep. it was, I, I didn't, you know, obviously after he passes, no one's going to say anything negative, but there were so many people coming out last week and had so many great things to say. And then I noticed that you had said that you had known Leslie kind of since, I guess, what, the, the late well, in 60s? 1963, I met him. Wow. Wow. I was in a, an R&B funk band with horns and everything. And he, we played the same club opposite, opposite each other, half on, half off. The drummer uh, from the Vagrants used my drums and he broke my pedal, you know? And then we did that for about a month. So I knew these guys quite a bit. And then I didn't hear about him for a couple of years. And uh, when I joined Vanilla Fudge, we were called the Pigeons. They were the Vagrants out in Long Island drawing 2,000 people to my manager's club. And I said, wow, unbelievable. Then you know, we hooked up with, again, 
and we talked about the uh, the fact that we played that club together. That was one of the first gigs, you know, and uh, really, really good. And then I played with Leslie in 1975. Uh, it was me, Mick Jones, who ended up being a foreigner, Kenny Aronson and Leslie. What a great band it was, you know. And there's a there's some video on YouTube. I did a solo in Mississippi Queen. And there's a video on YouTube of us um, playing. You hear the last like couple of chords of Mississippi Queen, then you see my solo. And the funny thing is, there was nobody in the audience. The place was empty because the way we, we flew in to do this thing was Don Kirshner's in concert. We flew in to do it. I use a, a secondary drum set I had in LA. And, you know, and I'm, I'm doing the solo. I get people clapping their hands, you know, to my solo. And they superimposed all the hand claps and everything. <laughs> you never you never saw the, the audience, but you heard them. Yeah, like yeah. the whole performance. It was pretty funny. Yeah. Wow. It was just a crazy year in terms of the people that we lost, obviously, with Eddie Van Halen and Frankie Benali and Neil Peart at the start of the year and Pete Way. And, uh, and we have Rocco, Rocco from, um, uh, Rocco, what band? Uh, what is hip? Tower Power. Yeah. Bass player, great bass player. He's gone too. There's yeah. So and many people. Lee Kerslake. Lee uh, Kerslake, yeah. members of Sweet. Uh, I mean, just. Uh, it was a tough one. Leslie was just the latest and hopefully the last, I would say. But uh, this 2020 was probably, you know, a tough year for a lot of reasons. But we just yeah. lost so many greats in 2020. And uh, my buddy Tim Bogut's in bad shape, too. So uh, it's really terrible to yeah. hear. Yeah, terrible that to be, that's a hard one. You know, he's like my brother. Beck yeah. Bogart and Apathy. Yeah. yeah, we have a new album. That hopefully it'll be out in 2021. It's called uh, BBA Live at the London Rainbow. Mm -hmm. 1974 it's got seven new songs and three of the originals from the first album hey. so already really, really, really you, might, album. you might do something so you might have some cactus coming out you're gonna have beck bogart and a piece coming out uh you yeah, said you might do the tour and then instrumental cover. album and i just wrote a christian song we just finished that might be uh, hopefully we'll get a deal for that so you know i'm just doing what i normally do you know just record and only thing that's different you couldn't tour you know is what's the book stick it is that the your your drum is that that's my doing? auto that's my autobiography okay that's the the, the sex drums and rock and roll oh that's what, yes yes okay that's what it's all about you yeah. know yeah i remember i remember and if you could just get back on the road you could have all those things again <laughs> <laughs> well you know i'm a bit old for that yeah you know I'm uh, get back on the road. It'd just be great to play, you know. Well, we, I've been playing right. in my studio here. And, you know, I just put up my old 1971 bass drum from the Cactus days on, in the studio. To see what it sounds like. It sounds great. And I got an old 1924 Ludwig um, Black Beauty snare drum, which is really sounds good. So you know, I, I've been doing that. You know, doing the studio. It's also a combination studio and a little bit of a gym. So I work out in the gym and try and stay healthy. And uh, today I actually went to a movie. Hey, the, movie the theaters sleep. are open? I love going to the movies, you know? Uh, he's in Florida. So in Florida, you can do those things. We can't Florida, do you can do that. Yeah. And uh, there were six people in this big stadium theater that had the big, comfortable chairs. It was awesome. I really like going there, hearing the loud sound. Have a bag of popcorn and a soda. I enjoy myself. Simple pleasures. How about you and your brother? Uh, have you been talking about doing a new album? Well, we we've been talking about it. We got some some half done demos. You know, but he, uh, doing sessions and doing stuff that he does. And uh, you know, our singer is we we could do an album now because we all have a studio. Mm -hmm. You know, it'd be easier to do an album but before everybody. Uh, well, we didn't. We we didn't use the band that we had. We use different people. Yeah. But this time we're going to use the band that we travel with. You know. Okay. So and everybody has a studio. So uh, we have one song that's in two parts. We we kind of did the guitar, bass, and guitar, bass, and vocal on one of them. Part one. We, we got to do the drums on it. But, you know, it's hard to get Vinny 
motivated, you know. I know Jim Crean, uh, is he singing on it? Yeah, Jim's, Jim's singing on it, and he did a good job. Big plug for him. He's a good guy, yeah. man. He's a good guy, great yeah. voice. Where are you guys at? Montreal. Montreal, Canada. Montreal, Canada. Oh, oh. Yeah. Yeah, I think we had you and Vinny up here. I don't, everything sounds like it was last year, but it was probably like three, four years ago. Yeah, right. It was. Yeah. I just uh, I just saw a movie or something that had Montreal in it. Oh, maybe it was. Uh, it was my. I don't know. Some some movie had Montreal. <laughs> That's some on on Netflix. Or, all you do is watch Netflix or yeah, Prime right. Video or Apple TV or you know any all that stuff. I've seen so many series and movies at home in the last ten months. It's ridiculous. Yeah, we're all binge watching. We all want to get back to seeing live shows, but while we're in, it's either read yeah. a book or watch Netflix. So, yeah, there you go. But the creative juices are flowing. I mean, a lot of people are completing those albums. A lot of people are finishing those books. A lot of people are getting around to the things they haven't been able to get around to on another sort of yeah. angle, right? Uh, well, there... I've, been, I've been doing that and other things. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like we, you know, we did a, a, a bunch of commercials for Amazon for, for my instructional books, you know, and uh, it's the first time I've ever going to have a big push on my instructional books. And, and, you know, a couple of them are really successful. So I'm looking forward to getting that done. Is there anything but anyway, else? I'm going to, I'm going to get going because yeah. I got to watch Dick Clark's Absolutely, Rocking. my friend. Thank you for jumping New Year's on. Eve, yeah. You know, that's like a tradition. Yeah, uh, yeah. We appreciate it's on a few minutes. On, so. on New Year's Eve. We really And do it's gonna be it. interesting because they're they're doing it in they're doing it in uh Times Square with no people. Yeah, yeah. How weird is that? <laughs> all okay, right. guys. Thanks, man. You Thanks for jumping on. One, all right? Happy New Year. All right. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Yeah. We hope to see you in the new year. Right. Ciao. Ciao. Bye bye. Take care. All right, here we go. All right, that was cool. All right. All right, we got Michael, we got Carmen, and uh, coming up soon, we're going to have kind of the more of the local content. Yeah, in about uh, eight minutes, and in those eight minutes, first I'm going to read the comments that are coming in. Uh, Marcy saying, "I uh, what is she saying here? Uh, bu, 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 bu. My dog has seizures from the fireworks. All right. We'll keep Sean the dog. Peck. The I like Sean Peck, buddy Sean Peck. Uh, New, Year, New Year's resolution to start drinking. Another one. New Year's resolution to start looking for a job. I guess get a real job. New Year's resolution to stop giving my friends Corona beers. New Year's resolution to really get serious about the death part of death to false metal. And uh, <laughs> Rick is a little too early. <laughs> But it's okay. We'll let him come on later. Uh, Who's that? Rick. I got Rick there waiting in the waiting room. All right. Rick is eager. But not yet. But not yet. But not yet. But not yet. And uh, let's see. Uh, Sean. Sean Black is saying, Hello. Happy New Year's. And Metal Ben. The last Flotsam and Jetsam album kicks so much ass. I can't wait to hear the new album. Jay Carmine Rock Drumming Royalty. Rich, any flotsam reissues? I should have asked, but I forgot. And Matthew Lee, where's Rick Hughes? Rick Hughes will be back at 1145. Okay. Rick and will actually will, ring in the new year with us. He will ring in literally the new year with us. And um, as we are waiting for our next guest, I'm going to finish up on this ballot stuff here. All right. You ready? Who you got there? All right. Who you got? Got uh, Valerie. We got, uh, this was like an email address, vernomatic at something or another, but. Can an email address, can an email address win a shirt, Jimmy? That's right. Okay. Craig Moorhouse, right there. You see that? Galermo, right here. You see that? And Mark Bulurci. Right, look at that. There, can you see that? 
I recognize a lot of these names first from our Judas Priest Iron Maiden poll last week and now from our Metallica Megadeth poll. Yeah. So I got all the names in here and I will pull out a winner right before this New Year's. I want to see if my clock works now. Okay. Hang on. Hang on, everybody. I want to see if my, my clock works. This is the official Metal Voice New Year countdown clock. Here we are. There's the clock, folks. 34 minutes and 34 seconds. Do you see that? 34 minutes, that is the countdown, and there will be an explosion. I know, Perrin, you can't see it. But I will take your word for it. You will take my word for it, okay? All right. So, so Jimmy, speaking of explosions, because I think we got a few minutes before Aldo Nova comes on. Yeah. There were a few explosions in Dubai today. Yeah. What do you think about that? Hold on. Let me just tell Rick 1145, just to make sure we're all in tune here. All Jeff right. Clark is saying well, Happy New Year's. All right. So Kiss. Let's talk about Kiss in the few minutes that we have. I saw the Kiss feed. I was just kind of on the internet on Facebook and I saw someone was filming it from their balcony in Dubai and they just, everybody was watching. So <laughs> that's how I saw it. I really didn't want to see it, but I kind of came across it. So yeah. I watched it. Gene and Simmons I, will be suing that person by tomorrow. I would yes, think. Yes, yes, yes. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I wasn't there in Dubai. I wasn't filming. I was just watching. It was there. I was watching. And I have to say that the whole show was your typical kiss show, the blood, the drum solo, you know, of course, there's a couple of little sort of like uh, Paul was like on an island, you know, uh, outside of the pool sort of thing. But the thing that blew me away that I was completely blown away by was the explosion. So they're doing rock and roll all night. Bef so the Guinness World of Record guy comes on and says, I'm going to, you know, you guys are getting the record for this and that. And you have one more record to break the most explosions or the most pyrotechnics. At a, at a rock show at a rock show he comes off the stage it starts things start blowing up they're playing rock and roll all night you can't even hear the song because there's just so many explosions you've been to sort of like these those firework shows right yep things are just going off and even when they finished the song it was like a war zone literally a war zone i've never seen so many fireworks go off at the same time i don't think anybody died but somebody could have died it was insane so Hats off to Kiss for having one of the greatest firework displays in Dubai. So, it's got to so give credit. So, you, so, Jimmy, hats off to Kiss. And I'm and I'm a Kiss apologist usually, but I'm still feeling kind of weird about this show in Dubai and pay-per-view and the band surrounded by a giant swimming pool. And, you know, I, I don't know how many people, if anybody, were there, if it was really just about the live stream. But it just seemed, the parts I saw... I guess nothing's weird when it comes to Kiss, but it just seemed weird. It just seemed that, I mean, the band playing on the biggest stage I have ever seen, but like nobody there or seemingly nobody there compared to the grandeur of the stage. So it just seemed, I don't know, a little, I mean, again, maybe nothing should surprise us with Kiss anymore, but, uh, and if any band was going to try this, why not Kiss? Mm -hmm. But it just seemed a little bit... Uh, like I, I want so to see you're saying that they're not feeding off the audience, right? That's what you're saying? Yeah, I mean, and it makes me worry. Like, is this what we have to look forward to if shows at the beginning, when they come back in 2021, if they're distanced and you only have 1,000 or 2,000 people in a 15,000-person arena and you can't curtain it off because there needs to be space, mm -hmm. what's the vibe and the ambiance going to be at, like, at big shows if there could only be a small amount of people in big venues and i guess don't get me wrong i'll take it right because right now i'm just itching to see a show yeah. but it just seems so weird to see kiss in, in front of this nothingness and it was really more about the broadcast than it was about playing in front of anybody so you know it makes me worry a bit about what might be ahead uh, you know i'm a kind of lazy guy i'll be honest with you <laughs> You want to sit back in four seats and uh, I, I, like I, I kind of like the distance. Maybe when I was younger, I kind of wanted to be you know front row general admission, but I'm kind of like I just want to really sit. I first of all, I love shows, don't get me, I, I love live shows, don't get me wrong, but I'm kind of like I want to sit down and enjoy it. I don't really want to stand for two hours. I'm getting old, right? And I want a nice view, I want to sit, you know, I might want to eat something or drink something. And watch kind of like a movie, and but live. I love live. Don't get me wrong. Again, do not get me wrong. 
I just kind of like, I like that spacing. I don't like the being squished with people, but I get why people want to be, you know, jumping around, moshing around, touching, feeling, you know. I get that. Don't worry. I get that. I get that completely. All right. Here we go. Guest number three. The man. Let's put him on. There he is. The legendary. There he is. Aldo okay, here Nova. is Aldo. Hello. Hey, what's up, man? What? You, what's up, dude? We're all both in, we're all in quarantine in Montreal, doing nothing. Yeah, we're all alone except for our families. But apparently, Florida is outside partying. Everybody's partying and having a good time in the rest of the world, except for us. Yeah. We just had yeah. some American friends are on, and they're blowing a lot of stuff up and gathering and having good times. Yeah, you were talking about Kiss in Dubai. They're blowing stuff up over there too. It's, yeah, it's... I think we saw that from outer space. I think you could have seen all those. <laughs> yeah, no, in Florida. Oh, are you going to blow anything up on your next tour? What's the plan? <laughs> is uh, what... Whatever is the next tour. I'm just like, I've got a great band. And, you know, it's just like being dressed up with nowhere to go. I mean, it's like, I, you know, I, I got a great band and I've got no no place to play. No, you know, no place to tour. I mean, you know, it would be great to be out there and actually uh, tour and play. But in the meantime, I'm sitting at home doing my COVID videos and Having a, a ball doing those, so you yeah, know, they're great. By the way, Bl the yeah, blood of the rich one, just say. a lot of views, say. and uh, everyone's been talking about the the kind of souped up new version of Blood on the Bricks. Uh, that that was great. How'd that come about? Uh, the blood on the Bricks. I was. I'm actually working on the. Uh, oh, Jimmy knows this. I'm, I was working on Under the Gun, and I've got that. That's my next one. Is Under the Gun, another souped up version, and. Uh, I had just been working on uh, Blood before, and then all of a sudden it got finished. I got the drum track in, and then I started working on that, and it just was like, it was the choice between Under the Gun or something newer with that Blood on the Bricks. And Blood on the Bricks rocked a lot more, so I figured I just wanted to rock, so I put that out. You know, so. I, th I think it was a good choice, man. Um, Under the Gun, it's got to rock out too. It's got to be hard and heavy. And uh, oh no, yeah. no, no, it's hard. It's hard and heavy. Don't worry. Got to be hard and heavy. <laughs> Perry, let, let me just tell you something. I want to tell you something. This Aldo always goes to me. He goes, you know, Jimmy. We always joke around. We always joke around. I like that. We joke around. But the reality is, he just likes to make fun of me. That's what he. Did. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like a one-way street making fun of me all the time. I go, yeah, yeah, but I mean, you're always making fun of me. But it's all good. I, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So. Aldo, tell us about your band then. Tell us about this new band, Heart Hitting Band. Oh, Heart Hitting Band is me uh, on guitar, vocals, and keyboards. Uh, uh, Billy Carmassi on drums. Uh, Timothy Timothy Gaines on bass from Striper and uh, uh, Gods and Monsters. And uh, Jack Frost on guitar from uh, Seven Witches and Sabotage. And, so that's the basic core. We have a keyboard player that we're talking to now. His name is Charlie Cav. And um, so he wants to do it. So hopefully uh, we're going to get out there in the end of the year and tour. And how did you hook up, you know, in particular, you know, with, with Jack and, and Tim, who are kind of newer to playing with you, I guess. And, you know, I guess Sabotage or Seven Witches aren't the kind of bands or maybe even Striper are necessarily the bands that they would associate Aldo Nova with. And then you have this great kind of, witches brew of players coming together you know someone who you played with for a long time but also some new blood for your band so so how did this all come about because i thought it was really interesting the the combination of guys you got playing with you now well first of all the guys that have to, that have to play in my band really have to have like a lot of chops which means they have to be able to play and have stage credits but it's funny the way i met tim uh him was i, I got a um i was gonna ask somebody for a friend request and then on the bottom of the Facebook page it says people you may know. And there was this tiny little picture about like that of, of Timothy Gaines and a bunch of other people. But Tim was playing bass and I just, something told me that guy was like a, a serious bass player. So I clicked and I asked him for a friend request and he accepted. And then we started, you know, messaging each other and I sent him an album to 2.0 and uh, we started talking. He was really interested in the project that's back when 2.0 came out in uh, 2018. And then we, we, we uh, remained as friends. And then I, the first time I met Tim was the night before we shot the I'm a Survivor video. 
which is like a huge production uh, video. I think it's a it's fifty thousand dollar video, and I had never met him before. We had, before. When I picked him up in the airport, it was the first time I met him. So that's how I met Tim, and we keep in touch. He plays like the player when all is said and done on my record, and he plays on Blood and the Bricks uh, COVID video, and Jack Jack just contacted me by email one day. And he just kept emailing me and emailing me and emailing me until I finally looked him up and went this and that. And then I said, oh, he, he said, call me at this number. And I called him, which he was like, you called me? And I went, yeah. So <laughs> we, started, we started talking and talking and talking. And we realized that we had a, we were brothers from a different mother. I mean, we really got along really well. So there's great chemistry. So the guys all really play well. Like I said, they sing well, great stage presence. So it's going to be great. Yeah, well, let me say, I I, li I was living in San Francisco in the early 2000s, and I saw Sabotage play at a small club. Probably was the last U.S. tour they ever did. And, and Jack Frost was playing guitar for them then. And this guy in a small club in San Francisco played and had the stage presence of a guy playing in an arena. So oh, yeah. I can't wait. Yeah, yeah I can't yeah. wait to stay out there with you. Because I, I remember, this was, just, it was about a week after 9-11. So we're talking about... Holy cow, like almost 19, 20 years ago. And I remember this vividly because Jack was a gunslinger on stage. And he was playing a small club in San Francisco as if he was playing the Montreal Forum, a big arena. So uh, uh, yeah. I think once we see you guys live, it's going to be really uh, cool to see. The yeah, it's going to kick serious ass. Trust me, we're not even worried about that. I mean, if I can, you know, kick some butt just doing it by myself with the guitar in the basement but to a track, I like, you know, it's all these tracks where I did fantasy or blood or all these things. So imagine with the whole band, it's going to be like pretty terrifying. I can't wait to go out, whether it's as a headliner or whether it's as an opening act for a big act. I mean, whatever gets me out there. I mean, you know. It really so, is. so just so everybody knows, go to the Aldenova YouTube channel and you'll see Fantasy, like a remixed, not re redone version of Fantasy, right? That's which, which, is, which is amazing, right? Um, you've done Blood on the Bricks. You've done Fooling Yourself, Fooling Yourself, which is another great track. These are all like sort of pandemic COVID videos that you've been doing and yeah, redoing the older stuff. Heart to Heart. Uh, heart, to heart. I did um, God, I did quite a few Paradise. I did Ball and Chain Acoustic. Uh, quite a bit. Which one, Sylvie? <laughs> <laughs> I got my wife there. We're ready to. Just Getting prepping you, friends. giving you your cues. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and and you know what? Let's not forget. I am a survivor off of Aldenova 2.0, which yeah. is probably one of the greatest songs that everybody should know about. It's just the video, the song. It, it's like an instant hit. It should have been like on all the radio stations playing all the time. It is a phenomenal, catchy, great song. It's just a well written song that people should know about. And very apropos for today, we're leaving 2020, going into 2021, and we survived 2020. And, you know, but we're going into 2021, and you know, we're going in, leaving 2021, leaving 2020 into 2021, and it's like just crawling into it. It's not like a, a big bang. You know, hopefully this year is going to be amazing. You know, everything will go back to normal with the vaccine, and you know everything is going to go back. But I think it's going to be slow though, rolling out. What do you guys think? Yeah, well, I was I was reading up on it, and they said by the way, the rate that they're sort of giving the vaccine, you're looking at June, October. That's when everybody who wants to be vaccinated will be vaccinated. Yeah, so, and, we, and we were just talking to Carmine Apice and, and to Michael Gilbert, and, you know, Carmine was saying he's hoping to do some shows in June, and then Michael from Flotsam and Jetsam was saying he doesn't know if they're going to get booked for shows until October. So, uh we're all fans here, right? We just want to see you and we want to see other bands that we love out there touring. But it sounds like booking agents and people like that are talking about booking shows more in the second half of, of 2021. Yeah, if I, was, if I was a booking agent too, I'd, I'd be like a little bit leery because there's no time frame on this. Now they're starting mutations. And, uh, but the, like I said, everybody's out there. Like I, I, like I said it before, the best way to put it is that I'm all dressed up with nowhere to go. I mean, you know, it's like... Uh, like I might as well put a text on him. I, my, I put a text on him at home in my house, and then I can't go outside because it's like COVID everywhere. So it's like uh, same thing with the band. I can't tour. Yeah. Uh, Eddie Gage. 
Eddie when... Gage, Eddie Gage is on hold. I was going to put a, uh, I'm putting out an EP probably uh, March or uh, probably March or April. I'm doing that, and now I'm in the process of doing a mini documentary on how it was done and the parts and. So just, did, just back up, just back up and tell everybody about Eddie Gage really fast, fast. You know, it's a concept album, a rock opera for those who rock, don't know. Yeah, it's a rock opera. It's about this uh, young musician called Eddie Gage and goes through his, it's about light, light and dark. It's about good and evil. It's about the music business, the bad side of the music business, the, the actually the bad side of the music business. There is no good side to the music business unless he's playing on stage. So that's, the way his his life sees it from this uh, his standpoint. Right. So uh, it's that's this is twenty three song album. It's an hour and fifty six minutes long. So uh, you know the people that complained that two point only has seven songs. <laughs> this one hopefully will satisfy them. Then they'll complain the opposite way that it's too long. <laughs> Never make them happy. Fickle fans. All right. Well, that's pretty much it, Aldo, buddy. Um, hey, happy New Year, everybody. Happy year. Tell happy your wife what I need. Uh, and to all your family, all the best. Thank you very much, Jimmy. Talk all to right, you tomorrow. Bye. <laughs> okay, later, bye. Happy New Year, Aldo. Okay, and which that leaves us with our last guest. All right, that's good. That was a cool dude, man. We're getting all kinds of inside scoop on what all the rock stars have coming up. It's good stuff so far tonight. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to stay awake there, uh, Perrin. <laughs> so we still Come have on, the hat. Jimmy. All right. Come so we on, talked Jimmy. about Kiss. Old. You can still stay up for New Year's Eve. All right. Eve. So before we bring Folks, on Jimmy's Rick. Jimmy's going to bed at 12.01 as soon as we get off the air. All right. So I'm just going to throw out some antipis, anticipated albums of 2021. I'll just toss them out there before we bring Rick on. Except Too Mean to Die, January 15th, A Nuclear Blast, Todd LaTorre, which the first track sounds amazing. Coming out in February the 5th, Michael Schenker, January the 8th, on Nuclear Blast 2021. KK's Priest is coming out with a new album uh, in 2021. They just mentioned that. Al Scooper, Detroit Stories, February 26th. Halloween, Summer of 2021, Ashes of Aries, which is Matt Barlow's band, 2021. And another artist that's coming out in 2021, you know who that is? He's Rick Hughes, Rick Hughes, right Rick Hughes, we're bringing him on. He's probably joining us. <laughs> What's that? In, in command. In command, and we're going to bring on Rick Hughes right now. All right, Rick. That's yeah. it. Hey, what's All up, right. man? Rick is no longer dancing on the ceiling. He is the right way. <laughs> That's it. I'm right here, guys. Oh, Rick, what's go. happening, man? Everything's fine. Am I, am I loud and clear? You are loud and clear. You are loud and clear. 17 minutes to midnight. Perfect. Perfect. What a way to start the new year, right? Yeah. Let me, I'm going to show the clock. I'm going to show the clock again. I don't know if you could see this, Rick, or not. It's the clock. There's 16 okay. minutes and 33 seconds. Okay. 16 minutes and 33 seconds. All right, Rick, tell us in command. What's the reaction no. so far? What a song. First single off the new album, the new Sword album that's coming out in, I think, 2021. What was the reaction yeah. like? Amazing. Everywhere, the, the, the reaction's amazing. And uh, listen, uh, what I like the most about uh, Sword's uh, latest project is that every song is so t totally different from one to another. I mean, in command is the trashier song of the album. Then, then you get you get a song w w which will remind you of the early days of Black Sabbath, you know, with, with, with a, a bit of Dio and a bit of Ozzy and some, some motorhead in there. And, oh, no, man, listen, this is just the tip of the iceberg, and I really mean it. All right. It's a great album. Is there going to be a second? Like, are we got? Do we have to wait for the album? Are we going to get a second single? That's going to get an early Guys, question. I, I I hear you loud and clear. You know, I I hear you because you you are uh, music lovers. You truly are. So you're you're anxious to 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 hear the rest of the material. But 
the pandemic as 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 all our plans uh, uh, have been mm -hmm. struck down by the pandemic you know everything was ready to go in march of 2020 we were good to go we were about to go we were talking tour with uh, with big boys from the US. No, let's not mention names because it didn't happen, but we were talking tours and everything. Everything was 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 on their way. And then the 13th of March happened and, and we had to 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 everybody went into their caves and kind of sheltered for like what, a couple of months at yeah. least. So never mind calling the office. <laughs> <laughs> is the record still coming out what is there anybody at the end of the line no nobody's at the end of the line because <laughs> now about... now there's an appetite right everyone is heard in command you know yeah. on, on the metal voice we have people from canada the u.s europe south africa we have people all over the place who and everyone's talking about it so now the appetite is there right so everyone's wondering when do we get the next course? That's gonna and then you know, so we you know we're gonna push. No, we're gonna we can get another single. Farron, we're gonna push real hard right, right, right on the on the uh, as soon as the ball drops on in twenty twenty one. Because you know, we, we have to be we have to be uh good musicians and then we have to be gentlemen and, and we have to act accordingly, you know. And right yeah. now it was not the time to push anybody's button. So yeah. we were hostage to the situation as everybody else. So again, you know what I did all summer long? Mm. I drove my Harley motorcycle bike, my chopper right here, with sword album playing. Huh. I, I would stop on the side of the road to, to, to start the album again and, 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 and hit on the road. And just listen to the sword album over and over again because it was it was taking me like ah oh, man to new horizons it was like so it's such a great album to listen to right while riding a harley motorcycle believe me <laughs> hey uh rick you also had a live album right that was released uh uh on, on was it combat i can't remember you had a live album sword live correct yeah 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 when was that released that was released uh, as soon as we signed the deal with Combat Record because it, it was, it's like a, a I, won't, I will not get into the details of the contract, but the Alive album was in the contract and it, it was a re, a early recordings from the 80s, 87 tour with uh, Motorhead in the UK. So we, we did 27 shows in 33 days. Wow. 27 yeah. shows, 33 days. That's the way we ran things back then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There was no, there was no rest for the wicked. Lemmy was a machine. <laughs> That's a nice... He would never, he would never go to sleep. And when he would go to sleep, yeah, yeah, man, it you know was he's like sleeping. <laughs> That's a good apprenticeship to the business, I guess. Right? It's like uh, one, of, one of your, one of your first overseas tours is uh, with Lemmy, uh, locked in a, locked in a room of Lemmy for six weeks. <laughs> Imagine that. I had that opportunity in my life. I did that. And when I was 20, I toured the UK opening for Motorhead and became friends with Lemmy, Phil Campbell, and Filthy Animal Taylor. Imagine that. You become friends with those guys, you know, and you're in your 20s. They teach you how to behave. Oh, water. <laughs> <laughs> teach you what not was, to do. It was the best, man. We were, we were, let me tell you one thing. I, I've, I've traveled a lot and I found that the people that resemble us a lot around the globe are the England. People from England resemble people from Quebec a lot. Okay. Why? One. Yeah. Well, one, they like their sports. Yeah. Two, they like their beers and their pubs. <laughs> <laughs> joie de vivre. La joie de vivre, you know, they're, they're, they're friendly. I, I swear to God, man, the, uh, being in England was like being at home with those guys, except for the accent. <laughs> and you're like, what? Which, what did you say? Which, which I don't have, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> who, am I to, 
Who am I to speak about accent anyways? Yes. Rick, I don't know if you've heard Phil Campbell's work right now, but Phil Campbell has a band with his yeah, son. Yeah, of course. Phil Campbell and the Bastard Sons. Yeah. A new album came out probably about six weeks ago. It was one of my top 10 albums of the year. So for you or for anyone who hasn't heard with Phil Campbell, Phil Campbell's doing a pretty good job carrying on the Motorhead tradition. It could obviously never be Motorhead without Lemmy, but uh, he's doing some pretty cool stuff. So, uh, and he's such a great guy, man. He's such a deserving artist, musician. Call it what you want. This guy's the real deal. You know, Lemmy is considered the real deal. You know, like the, the true rocker musician slash name it what you want. And who was by his side all that time? Phil Campbell. Phil was there, man. And and when I was there in 87, he was there, and he was there till the end. He was a big Emmy fan. You could see it. When they were on stage, he would play his guitar, but his pride for being the side, you know, mm -hmm. the, the, the right-hand man to Lemmy's uh, motorhead was, was, was palpable. Well, uh, that's someone, if you guys do some dates, I'd love to see you if Phil makes it to North America. If you guys are here, that'd be a great match, I would think. Would love to see you out there with Phil. You want to hear an amazing Phil Campbell story? Go ahead. Sure. So I'm invited in 2011 at the KISS concert at Heavy Montreal. KISS was there, remember? Yeah. 2011 or 2012? Sure. So I'm invited that same day of the show. So I, I go, you know. And Mortarhead was doing the opening. So uh, Phil... So it's a split stage, right? There was Mordehead on, on the big stage and, 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 and Kiss was ready to go right after the show on the other stage, just beside it. So I, I'm with Kiss Entourage, you know, uh, with Doug McGee and uh, Gene Simmons and uh, some friends and we're with, with, the, with the band, you know? We're with the band, especially with Gene, Gene Sa uh, Simmons. We're with him all night. So I'm on stage. I, you know, I haven't seen Phil Campbell since 1987. We're in 2012, so I'm I'm checking him play, and I'm, I'm you know I'm backstage. I'm on right on stage with him, and and he's looking at me. The show finishes, he passes me by, and, and he gives me that that tip of the hat, you know. And I go to speak to him, and I said, Phil, I don't know if you remember me, but uh, I, I just as I'm about to continue, he goes, Sword, you were with Sword. <laughs> It was an amazing night. It was an amazing night. Love night. That. Love that. I had a nice chat with him that, that back after the show, you know, after Kiss's show, because he was at, at when when we we're about to leave, he was sitting with, with his girl, his girlfriend. And, and and he took time to present me his girlfriend. He says, This guy, uh, he's a singer for a band that we toured with, man. I remember him. I remember you. Huh? I did huh? I was it was unreal, man. Unreal. You've 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 toured with some great people. I mean, there's David Elson, right? I mean, well, he was a fan of yours before you even knew he was a fan of yours, right? They were playing your song as they were David's driving the around best. on tour. It's crazy. David is the best. David Elson is the best. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. This guy's a legend. This guy, I mean, mega that. Come on, you know, and, and he's he's like a preacher, you know, he's when he talks, he talks, you know, and, and when he walks, he walks. Uh, I love this man. He's, a, he's, a, he's, he's like the, the guardian angel of swords come back. So, so what, what, what more can I say, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love the man. Yeah, I agree. I agree. He's a good guy, man. I wish them all, all the continued success, mega that, and especially since we're, we're we're here to talk about the new years and and, and giving our our best wishes and this and that our best wishes to dave mustang and for his health and, and to make sure that he, he stays strong yeah yeah so yeah, we're hoping look they're still they're supposed to be here in laval in july right obviously the show was supposed to be in the fall and now technically the show is still on for i think june or july at place bell in laval uh megadeth and lamb of god and in flames and trivium uh, and it'd be nice to see Sword added to that if, if it happens. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're hoping that we can get uh, Megadeth back in Laval. 
Guys. Let's start a pe- let's start a petition. <laughs> yeah, guys. Oh, I have my vision, Rick. I have my vision of the shows come back, and of heavy Montreal. I don't know about 2021, but maybe 2022. And who better if you guys have your album out to be on the bill at Heavy Montreal the next time we do it than Sword. Mark my words. Not at one o'clock in the afternoon. Not at one o'clock in the afternoon like last time or whatever, but at like eight o'clock at night when it's getting dark and everybody has had some beers and is ready to rock. That's when we want to see Sword at Heavy Montreal. Guys, I'm doing a time check, guys. I'm doing a time time check. We have it's all gonna happen. It's all gonna happen. Four minutes and thirty-three seconds. That's what uh, the time check is. We have four minutes. Tell us, tell us when it's two minutes to midnight. I will tell you. <laughs> that's right. That's right. You want, you want, two, minutes two minutes to midnight. So Rich. Yes. Rich Cantino says, Happy New Year. Cheers, guys. Matthew Lee saying, this is what Matthew Lee saying. I'm Matthew. watching this and the bye-bye at the same time. Strange coincidence that Rick Hughes appears at the same time as Eric Lapointe on the Bye Bye. So did I? Not you. It's Eric Lapointe. Uh, He's on Bye Bye, and you're here. So uh, strange no, coincidence. No, but maybe they're talking about the stuff I did with him this summer, and and it went, uh, it went fucking. The media went crazy with it. We, we were just riding our bikes. Yeah. And we stopped. We stopped in in this old village. Uh, uh, in, uh, near Drummondville, yeah. and and this guy bought the church, and he built a garage for for Mark, for Harley Davidson motorcycles, a repair shop garage, mm-hmm. and, and a big restaurant, and, and it's it's re- it's a really nice place in Saint Zipile. Where's that? Imagine okay. that. Okay. So listen to this, guys. Listen to this. So we're we're in our. Uh, our close quarters for like months and months and months. All our shows are canceled. We go for a ride for a bike. We stop there. We're outside. Everybody's standing far from us. And, and everybody's respecting the, the guidelines, you know. Somebody puts a guitar in my hand and I start to sing. Everybody goes crazy and people are happy. And I'm happy that people are happy. And some guy puts that on the net. And then it's front page news of Journal La Morale the next day. Yeah. Say, well, I don't think Eric can't cross the street without being front page of Journal La Morale, I guess. On... No, but this one, I had to go on Daniel Levesque and explain that this is not what everybody think it is. It's not. It's not. We, we, we didn't. And nothing was done on purpose. Everything was done legally, you know. Yeah. It, but it was all shown from an angle where, what time is it? All right. It's, it's uh, checking time. I got three minutes to midnight. Okay. What do you got, Jim? Matt, quickly, uh, Melissa's saying, happy 2021. I'm watching this and Twilight Zone. So people are, seem to be watching this and something else at the same time. Matthew Lee's also saying, I also want to know what happened to the song Slow Train. Will it appear on the new Sword album? The song Slow Train. <laughs> that's, I guess man, you played it live. Is that what you did? That's, no, it's a song I wrote uh, days, days, and years ago, and it's it's in the junkyard right now. Uh-huh. Maybe someday I'll, I'll 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 take it out of the junkyard and put some new welding and stuff. But for now, Matthew it's is a- hardcore. Matthew is one of our viewers, and he's hardcore, man. He knows more about us than or you guys than, <laughs> than Thanks, we know about ourselves. <laughs> All right, look, I'm gonna pick a name now. This this we have uh, two okay. minutes to midnight. Because somebody yeah. has to win the t-shirt. But somebody has to win the shirt. I have a contest here. So in the Expos hat, you see that? The Expos hat. It's a, it's a, it's a beautiful t-shirt, by the way. Yeah, thank you. And someone uh, is going to win we'll it. We'll get you one. Not this one, but. And here we go. Here comes the names, guys. It's three minutes to midnight. I'm going to put the clock. Actually, before I do that, it's one minute. I'm going to pick a name, okay? I'm going to pick, pick a name. name. I'm going to pick a name right down. now. Right before. Okay, here's the name. Alejandro Melo Enrico, you just won yourself a free T-shirt. Metal Voice T-shirt. There you go, Metal Voice. All right, let's go to the clock. Let's go to the clock and let's just see how much time we have left. Here we go. We're on the clock. It's 34 seconds, guys. This is the Google clock, so it can't be wrong. 29 seconds. Because Google runs the world, so you know they must have three o'clock. You know, get your fireworks they, ready, uh, folks. Uh, Twenty seconds. Jimmy has is everybody ready here? 
Is that the official kiss flamethrower, Jimmy, or what do you got? I'm there? getting things ready here, Perrin. I'm getting things ready. I just hard bye to, bye, nine, eight, seven, six, five, five, four, four three, three, two, two one. Kaboom! One. Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year! Happy New Year! And before, and guys. Yes. This is the pyro I brought today. You ready? <laughs> <laughs> I just can't get it going. Don't try this at home. Do not. Kiss had pyro, but I got big time pyro here. Hold on. And then get this going. This is pyro work better than yours. Damn. It worked well, before. Oh, the props. here we go. Here we go. Bring in go. the new year. Bring in Whereas the new year. Whereas Kiss was in the Guinness Book of World Records today. This one uh, yeah, there it is. Bring in the new. This is live. This is li look at this. All right, don't burn your. You know what? You know what I did? You know what I did? I brought an oven mitt. The extra, I brought the an oven mitt trip. just in case. <laughs> this is the precautions we take during the COVID years. Look at that. There's bring in the new year. Bring it in. Amazing. You like that, eh? I I I go all out when I do a show, Rick. I yeah. go all out. We spare, we spare no expense at the metal voice. I go. There it is. The flame <laughs> has burned. We are in the new year. And to celebrate one more time, I brought out no expense. Ooh, the dollar sure store. <laughs> <laughs> the dollar store. There it is. Orlando, Happy New Year's. Metal Ben, Happy New Year's. Val, Happy New Year's. Raul, Happy New Year. And uh, let's see what else Happy New Year, guy. We have the best fans on the Metal Voice. They're Orlando, loyal. La Bachelet. Blue. Every debate Jeff we have, Clark. they're in there representing their point of view. They love the music. So, uh, we love and, you guys. We love you guys a for watching. Bit, a little bit crazy stuff here. You guys want to see this? Here it is. You see what that? You got, Jim. Look at that. That's a New Year's oh, oh my God. antennas. Jimmy, you gotta go for a kiss. And usually the lights go off on this, but the lights aren't working. So What's wrong with the props? <laughs> you like the oven mitt? This is yeah. for safety. Safety first. Safety We're going to get you more budget next year, Jimmy. <laughs> All right, guys. It's been a pleasure. It's been fun, and thank you, Thanks. everybody. You. We should go kiss our wives now. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Rick's already gone. <laughs> Rick, are you still there? Rick has to go kiss his well, wife. I'm here. It was Lulu that was trying to give me a call, probably to talk about the new year. She didn't know I was I was doing this, I there guess. Well, we all have to go wish our loved ones a happy new year. I hear my wife and my teenagers upstairs. So uh, Hey, guys. Right. Hey guys, thanks for the invite. It's always a pleasure seeing you and talking with you. I really enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, we'll do it again, my friend. We'll do it again. I wanted to do something in person, like an interview in person, but we got a lockdown, hardcore lockdown. So anyways, there's time. Yeah. There's time. One day soon, we hope. All right, Rick. Have yourself a All wonderful right. bon Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year, Rick. See yeah, New Year. happy New Year's, guy. Happy New Year's. Take All care. Right. All right. All right.